Hello, friends, and welcome to my very first podcast, which I'm calling Faith-Filled Findings. Uh, Today, I'm going to be talking about promoting peace and how, as a believer, um, we are called to be peacemakers. And so, going off of that, God creates us to be peacemakers, even in Matthew 5 with the Beatitudes it says that like blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God so even from the get-go as soon as we're born we have this like (sighs) command to bring peace to others um when I was talking with my roommate she gave me this really interesting analogy that in a way Life and peace are kind of like a puzzle, and when you have different conflicts, it's like these pieces of your puzzle are missing. And so when you have peace and when you come together, it's like those pieces are going back to where they fit. Um, And I thought that was really cool. Um, So as reflecting and reading this book called An Essential Guide to Interpersonal Communication, Um, it was kind of talking about different ways of facing conflict. Um, and one of them that it was talking about avoiding was confrontation, which for me isn't really an issue. However, I know that a lot of people tend to solve different conflicts and issues by confronting what it is that is causing that problem. Um, personally, it's not my style. I do find joy in restoring different conflicts however um it's not everyone's style um but also in the book it talks about how when we share peace and when we kind of bring shalom um we have to humble ourselves in the books of james luke and ephesians all three mention that those who humble themselves are exalted and that God is with those who humble themselves um and so I think to be humbled you have to let God have control and to be patient and allowing him have control over what it is you may be working through um I think that to kind of promote peace you have to also accept that not everyone sees the same way not everyone has the same perceptions of things and that you have to embrace that there's going to be differences among people and so to embrace these different perceptions you don't necessarily have to um, compromise your own beliefs in any way I strongly believe that you should stand by and stick by what you believe But you should also be optimistic in the sense that other people may not have the exact same beliefs. And I think that in this way of accepting, you know, differences will kind of help to restore a lot of different problems in relationships. I know personally there has been even recently times of in relationships where I've wanted nothing but peace within those friendships and relationships. Um, However, peace isn't something that is always easily obtainable. Um, I think as Christians, we strive to search for and obtain peace, but it's, it's not always easy because we think that we can find peace within ourselves and within others. However, we're totally forgetting that to find and experience peace we have to go to God and we have to let God move us to a place of peace and we even have to go through struggles and conflicts that will make us feel anything but tranquil it'll make us feel on edge and maybe even angry or saddened and depressed but we have to remember that as a Christian, we have to go to God. If we don't go to God, 
we won't ever find real peace. One thing that really stood out to me in this book written by Schultz and Betzinski is the section that talks about how interpersonal conflicts affect our credibility as followers of Christ and how we deal with conflicts can reflect not only our own personalities but it reflects our savior and as Christians how we act is supposed to reflect what we believe in and I thought it was quite interesting um it talks about that conflicts are an opportunity for God's glory to be revealed in our lives and I think that's really cool and I definitely agree I think that through conflicts we can kind of show not only who we are but who God and Jesus are through us um I think a lot of conflicts recently come through um like social media you can't go on any social media without there being a negative post like I challenge you to go on Facebook right now and scroll and not tell me that a good portion of the people who post on Facebook have posted something negative that or even posted something that might be an opposing view to something you have um I think to deal with something that might even frustrate or like go against what you believe I think as Christians we have to kind of um we have to think of what our response to those posts would say about our um our personalities in Christ like I can honestly say that sometimes I'll have family members who will post just that, you know, life sucks or whatever, and that there's nothing good in life. Even friends do it. Like, I I can't say there hasn't been a day this week that a friend hasn't said a negative thing every day. And I try my hardest to search for the positives. And I know that life is hard, and I know that we go through struggles and trials and different conflicts, whether it's between personal, like, interpersonal relationships or even just, like, internal conflicts. Um, And so, kind of bringing on peace within the friendship doesn't always mean that you have to confront or speak your mind of what is going on. I think bringing peace shows that you are there and you are present, but also that you understand. I think to have, to feel peace is also to feel that you're not alone, that there's a presence and it's usually God's presence without a doubt. Do I can't, <laughs> I can't not say that whenever I've felt any time of peace, it hasn't been because of God, because, you know, God is good, um, and I just think that between different posts, either on social media or even just, like, in everyday relationships, um, that this whole idea of peace is just, like I said, like, it's a presence thing, it's a, it's an affirmation that we're there to help each other and we're there to grow and we're helped to bring as talked in the bible shalom to one another and so i think going off of this the idea of shalom or the concept is not only to like feel at peace but also to kind of have this desire to give love and to be loved And as Christians, we are called, you know, it's one of the top two commandments is to love our neighbors as ourselves. And so just kind of like going off of this, I just, you know, hope that you all go and be peacemakers. Thanks for listening, guys.